welcome to South Summit Academy. I'm Giancarlo Mafus. I'm here with Dr. Coleman, the principal of the school, and Dr. Coleman. So why did you, first, first question, why, why did you choose this spot, like with this spot? With this? With the Empowering Students to Lead? Okay, good question, Giancarlo. I am Dr. Coleman, and I am the principal of South Seminole Academy, as he just explained. And why I chose this place to do my introduction to you as families and to our students is because this is my personal vision, as well as our school's vision, is that we empower our students to lead. When we come, a lot of times in middle school, students don't know what to expect. They don't know what they want to do. I even think about you, John Carlo, when you're in sixth grade, very shy. And look at you in eighth grade interviewing the principal. So this is like one of my goals. Like we want to bring out the best in all of our kids. And I think this thing saves it the most. So I, this is one of my favorite places on campus. So I have another question. I don't think it's really necessary, but like, why'd you become principal of South Central? I became principal of South Seminole. I want to say that I love working at a Title I school. I feel that is my niche. I think those are the students that need me the most. They need all the resources that can come with that. So it, it really gives me that opportunity to pour into students to help empower them to lead. And you know, those are skills that can be taken to any school. But when asked specifically why South Seminole, that is my why. And one of the things I don't know, that I just want to might want to expound on is culture also for South Seminole and what our vision is for our students. We realize that all of our students make mistakes and our goal and our mission is to remediate that behavior so that they can be the leaders that we know lies in each and every one of them. All right, and I think that's all the questions we have. I appreciate it, I appreciate it. And our cameraman back here Yo. as well uh, that is doing all the recording. <laughs> but enjoy your time tonight, um, families, getting to know a little bit about our school, allowing us the opportunity to get to know a little bit about you so that we can work together to empower our students to lead. All right, one, two, three. Don't forget to storm. Hello, Hurricanes. My name is Carson Argyle, and I am here with our assistant principal, Ms. Reed, and she'll be sharing some program highlights about our magnet. Our magnet focus is law, is leadership, law studies, and advanced studies. Ms. Reed, can you please introduce yourself and some highlights regarding the leadership aspect of magnet? Hello everyone, I'm Ms. Reed, one of your assistant principals, and welcome to Open House. So our first thing that we're going to discuss today is our leadership aspect of our magnet. We have different leadership elective courses, such as Leaders for Life, we have Emerging Leaders, we have Senior Seminar. Um, you can utilize the seven habits in your daily life as you prepare for your future academic and career plans in all of these courses. We also have some great leadership classes such as Student Government, Latinos in Action, and Lighthouse. These classes help you to develop and strengthen your leadership skills here at South Seminole. There are many leadership opportunities outside of the classroom as well. One of our major opportunities is the Hurricane Shake which is a school-wide event that teaches students how to introduce themselves um, so that they're able to be able to interact with others, they give a proper handshake, maintain eye contact, and project that confidence that we know that all of you have. Finalists are then selected to participate in the Hurricane Shake Finals, and the winners get to go to Atlanta to participate in the National Amazing Shake Competition. We also have leadership academies where students participate in different things that interest them. We have STEP Academy, we have Future Business Leaders of America, Beta, um, Soccer, and the list goes on. Not only do students have fun during their academy time, but they also get to participate in service projects. So they also give back to the community while having fun. Can you provide us with some spotlights of our Law Studies program? 
I would love to. Our, last, our law studies continuum has three different um, focuses. We have our intro to legal studies class, we have our criminal justice class, and we have a year-long street law class. And our students also get to learn speech and debate within um, their classes. Um, we have a partnership with Rollins College where our students get to strengthen those speech and debate skills, so we're very happy for that partnership with Rollins. As we conclude, can you explain some key parts of our advanced studies aspect of our magnet? Yes, I can. So our advanced studies encompasses our pre-IB program, our world languages, and our global entrepreneurship course. So within our pre-IB prep, this is a preparatory strand for the high school IB programs at Seminole High School and Winter Springs High School. Um, the high school advanced placement courses or high school honors cl classes. So when students take our pre-IB prep program, we are preparing them for extensive course of study, rigorous courses of study in math, science, world language, social studies, and language arts. In our world language courses, students can explore the cultures and different greetings and things related to um, different languages such as Arabic, Mandarin, Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, Hindi, Korean, Swedish, Russian, Greek, French, German, Italian, and Latin. And also in our Global Entrepreneurship course, you learn a range of things from career exploration, financial literacy, and you even get to participate in Shark Tank. Who doesn't want to be a part of Shark Tank? We also have JRTC, which is very, very well known. So these are just some of our program highlights, and I look forward to seeing you participate in many of these opportunities. Hi, my name is Serenity. I'm talking to Mr. Brian about Minka. Hello, Serenity. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. You know what Minka is? No. What oh. is Minka? Okay, so Minka is a database that we use here at the school. Uh, we use it primarily for hall passes. We use it for positive and negative behavior. And we also use it for groups. For example, if you're a cheerleader, um, volleyball team, um, softball team, whatever group you that we have, chess club, uh, we can create a group. I can create a group. I can put all of my students in it. And then I can just post my messages in one spot and everybody will get it. It'll come to their tablet, their phone, or whatever electronic device they, uh, that they use. That's for our groups. What does it do? What does it do? So for earlier, I mentioned hall passes. So for students here at uh, South Seminole, we use Minga for hall passes. When you want to go on a pass to the clinic, restroom, classroom, wherever you go, the teachers is going to put the information in Minga, take some less than 15 seconds. And now, I'll just be able to go on my cell phone while I'm in the hall. If I see you walk in the halls, I can just go in, put your name in, it'll show me the pass, who gave you the pass, where you're going to, and also the pass will have a time limit. So the teacher can give you anywhere from three minutes or more, depending on where they're sending you. And after so many points, you'll be able to cash them in for prizes and rewards. And we're basically rewarding you for your good behavior. So we track positive and negative behavior. We like to track the positive the most, but sometimes we have to track the negative just so we can make some corrections along the way. How will I know how many reward points I have? Okay, so for you, you have an electronic device. Of course, we don't allow you guys to use them at school unless it's during lunch. But when you're home or during lunch or if your teacher authorizes it, you can use your electronic device and you can go log into the Minga app yourself and enter your school password and it will show you how many uh, positive points you got. It will also show you if you have any negative behavior in, inside of Minga. Uh, same thing, it'll show you can look at your, your historical data and see how many hall passes you've taken per teacher, per class, for the week. You can look for the last seven days, you can look for the last 30 days, so it's all in there. So you can also keep track of your own information as well, so if you want to manage yourself. Okay. And lastly, parents. Parents as well. Parents will be able to log into Minga as well, so if they would like to track your behavior and see how you're uh, doing in school, they can track. They get, they'll also get alerted when we give you a positive reward point, and uh, so they'll be able to track that as well. And if you have any negative information or positive, they'll know it based on their, uh, by them monitoring the Minga. Any other questions? All right, thanks for coming by. I gotta put you in Minga so you can go back to class. Okay. Greetings, Hurricanes. 
My name is Travis Brown and I'm the instructional coach on campus that provides instructional support to teachers who teach social studies and science. For the purpose of this video, I wanted to also share that I serve as the Title I and Parent and Family Engagement Coordinator here on campus. Title I provides federal funded dollars to schools who have students who are at risk of being left behind. These dollars provide for student supplies, instructional personnel, or funds for events that support student achievement. In order for a school to qualify as Title I, they must have at least 40% of their student population on free and reduced lunch. As a Title I and Parent and Family Engagement Coordinator, I will focus on supporting our community with bringing a positive learning environment here to South Seminole's campus and be a supportive liaison to our parents at home. If you ever need to reach out to me, you can email me at browntl1 at scps.k12.fl.us or you can call me at 407-746-1350, extension 31303. I look forward to serving each and every one of you. Have a good day. Good evening, South Seminole Academy family. Today, Mrs. Mafus and I would like to discuss the Florida Assessment of Student Thinking Better, known as the FAST. The FAST is a progress monitoring system that is administered three times per year to track your students' progress in learning the benchmarks of excellent student thinking, BEST standards throughout the school year. FAST assessments are computer adapted tests taken on a computer or tablet. The questions get easier or more difficult depending on how the student responds and each student will see different questions from a common item bank. Each test attempts PM1, PM2, and PM3 will present 35 to 40 items that will cover the entire test. Blueprint meaning Students will encounter items representative of the standards within the subject or grade level. Some of the important things we want you to know about the FAST testing. There are no electronic devices permitted during the assessment. This includes AirPods, smartwatches, cell phones, etc. The students are not permitted to talk during the assessment, even during break time. The students will be afforded an opportunity to eat lunch, but in a more secure atmosphere and monitored. This is to ensure they do not discuss any test material during their break. The students will receive all accommodations as indicated in their IEP or Individual Education Plans or 504s. Our last piece of information regarding FAST deals with how to access student scores. We have a flyer located on the first floor in the lobby detailing how to access the student's score step by step using the FAST portal. Please feel free to retrieve one of our flyers during your time here at the open house. Have a good evening and don't forget to storm. So I'm Mrs. Hernandez Craig. I am one of the assistant principals here. And here at South Seminole Academy, we have a ton of support services. So whatever you need, just talk to us and let us know and we will be there for you. Hi, I'm Miss Gio. I am your academic intervention um, specialist and my job is to make sure that you are promoted to our next grade level. I'm here to monitor your GPA. I'm here to support you with any kind of academic services you may need, especially if you need help in assignments, homework, um, some projects, um, anything that you will need, I am here for you. Hi, so I'm Miss Steed. I'm a behavioral interventionist and I go in and out of classrooms. I help support teachers and um, kids so that they're successful in the classroom. If there seems to be um, some areas of need, I can go into the classrooms. I also offer individual counseling down here in my office. I'm always available to help these students. They see me around campus every day. So whatever I can do to help, however I can support them, um, I'm kind of just that safe place on campus, that adult that they always know they can kind of turn to if they need help. Hello, my name is Dr. Wendy Cora, and I'm the assistant principal over ESE, math, and numeracy electives. As part of my role, I also facilitate the School Advisory Council, 
and in collaboration, write the school improvement plan. The School Advisory Council, also known as SAC, is an opportunity for parents, teachers, non-instructional staff, business partners, students, and administration to come together. The primary role of a SAC member is to serve as an advisor to the principal, to ask questions, clarify information, and make recommendations regarding school-wide issues that may be impacting student achievement, and to make recommendations for the school improvement plan. SAC also oversees a budget based on student enrollment granted from the state. If you're interested in being a part of South Seminole Academy SAC, please go to our webpage and contact me, Dr. Wendy Cora, via phone or email. Hi Hurricanes, I'm Mrs. Messler, the literacy coach here at South Seminole Academy, and I'm here with Dr. Gonzalez. Hi, I'm Dr. Gonzalez, and I am the magnet facilitator and also instructional coach for math. And we're here to talk about some of the funky things that are happening at the bell, on the bell schedule here at South Seminole. So if you'll notice on our bell schedule, on Monday, we have a special period called storm. Dr. Gonzalez, can you explain what that is? Yes, of course. Storm is um, kind of like our advisory period. It's um, the time, it's 30 minutes every single Monday. It's a bit at the beginning of the day. And it's kind of like the time where um, we build community. We just give um, a quick lesson about the leader in me mostly. And um, later on, we're, you're gonna be able to see um, kind of like a lesson that we normally do with the students. And um, they just reflect on um, those lessons and also that is tied with the leadership academy so the same class that they go to um, on the first period on mondays that is called storm is the same one that they go to on fridays during leadership academies okay very nice thank you i was wondering about that storm the other thing that you'll see on our bell schedule is the elevate block which you will see on wednesdays and fridays so that block of time is not attached to a class period. It's not second period or fourth period. It's between those classes. And students during that time will go to one of two places. They will either go to an intervention for ELA or math. If they're doing math interventions, they'll go to that on Wednesday. And if they're doing ELA interventions, they will do that on Friday. If they're not doing interventions, they will be going to a project-based learning activity with a a teacher um, based on a topic that they chose. So the teachers will be um, working with students to create some sort of project that's around writing. This is supporting our school-wide literacy focus this year on improving our students' writing skills. So that's an exciting time during the week and I'm sure your students will have much more to tell you about that once we really get it going. This is our first week where we're really starting with that time block. So ask your students how their Elevate is going. And that's all for us. It was very nice to talk to everyone tonight. And so again, I'm Mrs. Metzler, the literacy coach, saying farewell and have a lovely evening. And I'm Dr. Gonzalez, and you're gonna hear my vo voice a little bit more um, later on in today's activity. Thank you so much for being with us. Hi, I'm Dr. Fillmore. I'm one of the deans here at South Seminole Academy. I'm here at the Proactive Support Center. I'm here to show you what's going on, and we're gonna take a little back screen look at it, come on. You can see here, the Proactive Support Center is a center that is here to enhance and make your time here at South Seminole Academy an enriching and supportive process. That is what we're here for. It'll be myself and one of the deans that'll be in this office sometimes, but the main person that'll be in this office is Ms. Bermudez. She is the Administrative Hi. Assistant for the Proactive Support Center. In the Proactive Support Center, you may have some aspects of where you as a student may have some concerns. This is where you would come to voice those concerns in a statement or to one of the deans, which would be next door. So anytime you need us, we're here at the Proactive Support Center. Thank you. Good evening, um, Hurricanes, and welcome back to South Seminole Academy. We are so excited to have you here tonight, and we wanted to show you a little bit of what the kids are normally doing in their storm classes every Monday morning. So we prepared a very short lesson on the framework of the seven habits. So I'm going to explain a little bit what the lesson is all about, and then you're going to be watching a video and just going through a different activity that you're going to be doing with your own children. So the framework of the seven habits is based on the principle of growth. It is called the maturity continuum. The habits 
build on each other. The more you take responsibility for your life, work toward meaningful goals, and use your time well, the more independent you become. While it's good to be independent, there is something even better. It is called interdependence. We must work well with others to be successful. Going for win-win, understanding others, and valuing people's differences make you more interdependent. The last habit, habit seven, sharpen the saw, surrounds all the other habits. It's the habit of renewal. If you practice habit seven, you do something every day to recharge your body, mind, soul, and emotional life. You cannot practice the other habits unless you practice habit seven. So, to help us understand the habits a little bit better, let's go in and watch this quick video so we can reflect on how we can incorporate the seven habits into our family life and develop a principle of growth for all our hurricanes. To achieve lasting effectiveness, we go through a natural process of development symbolized by the maturity continuum. Dependence is the lowest level of maturity. When we are dependent, we need others to take care of us, to come through for us, to give us our sense of worth and security. Dependence is the attitude of you. I need you to take care of me. The first three habits help us move from dependence to independence, which is a higher level of maturity. Habit one, be proactive, means that we develop our own power to choose our actions and accept responsibility for our choices. Habit two, begin with the end in mind, means that we define the kind of life we want to lead. It's creating clear objectives and laying out a vision or blueprint for what matters most to us and who we want to be. Habit three, put first things first, is where we plan and accomplish our goals so that our lives reflect the vision we have for ourselves. Learning and regularly practicing these first three habits helps us to win the victory over self, attaining what we call the private victory. Where dependence is the attitude of you, you are responsible for me. Independence is the attitude of I. I am responsible for myself. I can choose my future and make it happen. To be highly effective, there is another level of maturity, interdependence, which is the attitude of we. It's where we work together creatively with others to achieve far more than any one of us could accomplish on our own. Achieving interdependence is the goal of habits four through six. Habit four, think win-win, is the attitude of seeking mutual benefit in our relationships and interactions with others. Habit five, seek first to understand, then to be understood, is the ability to truly listen to others, to understand and honor their perspectives and realities. It also means to communicate our own views in a way that is both open and respectful. Habit six, synergize, is the process of working with others in a collaborative and creative way to achieve new and better results. When we think and act interdependently, we win what is called the public victory. Without sufficient independence, people will not have the character and self-mastery to work interdependently with others. That is why habits one, two, and three come before habits four, five, and six. They focus on self-mastery, on developing the strength of our own character. Private victories precede public victories. Habit seven, sharpen the saw, surrounds all the other habits and is the habit of renewal. It's the habit that gives us the power to consistently carry out the other habits in our lives. It's a pattern of daily private victories that creates an upward spiral of increasing effectiveness that lifts us to new and more rewarding levels of understanding and living. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to just turn to your shoulder partner, which in this case, um, it can be your own child. And you are going to talk about the video and um, answer these follow-up questions. Number one, if you could name one way you could be more independent, what would it be? And then the second question would be, how can our family become more interdependent so we can accomplish more together? You're going to have two minutes to answer those questions and starting now.
So now that you know a little bit more about the seven habits, we have a quick activity that you are going to just review while you are here in the classroom, but you're hopefully going to take it home and keep practicing. So right now you should be having a bingo card, which um, is going to be showing a bunch of activities. Just review it with your child and you're going to have two minutes to uh, do that as well. And just try to mark which ones are the ones that you are ready to go and do at home. Well, thank you guys for um, going over that activity and I hope it's really um, something that you enjoy to do with your family. Right now, we're gonna be doing our last activity of the night. So if, we, if you can just take a piece of paper um, that the teachers uh, might have provided to you and just answer the following statement. My family and I will grow as leaders by and you don't need to do it very um, long, just something, something short, and you're gonna just turn it into your teacher before leaving the classroom. If you finish early enough, then go ahead and look through the curriculum companions that are in the classroom so you know exactly what your child has been doing during their storm time. So that's about it. I hope this lesson was really meaningful to you all and that you can take it home and keep practicing those habits um, with our students. Remember, they are the best teachers at it. So thank you again for coming to um, our open house. I hope you enjoy your evening and I'll see you next year.